Welcome to Watch Me Code. In this episode, I'm going to use a tool called Doco to generate annotated source code as documentation for the Siphon project that I've been building. Then once I have that done, I'll create a branch in my GitHub project to host the documentation via GitHub's Pages feature. The idea behind annotated source code is to have your code and comments turned into documentation, and Doco does exactly that. It will parse your code and comments and produce a document that shows the comments on the left and the syntax highlighted code on the right. Now there's a handful of tools involved in getting Doco to run, but these are tools that I generally have installed on my system anyways, including Node.js, Python, and CoffeeScript. And I know you're wondering why I'm introducing so many different languages and runtime environments into this project. After all, we already have Ruby to run Jasmine, we're writing and running tests for the project in browser-based JavaScript, and we're using Node.js for our build process. So is it really necessary to add CoffeeScript and Python to the project dependencies? Well, probably not, honestly. But like I said, I have these tools installed on my system anyways, and we're really not going to use these new languages for anything other than running the tools that we need to generate the documentation. Plus, I like using a mix of languages and runtimes when the combination lets me use the best tool for the job. But if you're not interested in these additional requirements, check out the Doco documentation for links to various ports of Doco into other languages and runtime environments. So you can find Doco and its documentation on GitHub at jashkinis.github.com slash doco. And this documentation here is actually generated by the Doco tool itself. So the project is written in CoffeeScript, but the output produces the same kind of documentation that you can find on projects like Backbone.js or my Marionette plugin. And this is the style of documentation that we want to produce for the Siphon project as well, where we have code nicely, code nicely formatted on the right-hand side, and then the comments from the code showing up on the left-hand side. And you can see that there are various features included in the comments here, including boldface type, links to various other projects, and other bits that have been added in. And all of this is done in the comments directly through markdown syntax. Now, if you're not familiar with Markdown syntax, it's a nice, succinct little language that helps you to generate HTML markup. And you can find that documentation at daringfireball.net slash projects slash markdown. But I'm not really going to get into the depths of that right now. So we need to get Doco up and running on our box. And in order to do that, we have to install a number of tools. And that list of tools includes a Python project called Pigments. Now, if you don't have Python installed, you can get Python at python.org. And you can hit the download links right here to get it onto your system. Now, if you're on a Mac, you've already got it installed. It might be an outdated version of Python, but it should be good enough to use for Doco. If you're on Windows or Linux, uh, you probably don't have it installed on Windows. I'm not sure about Linux, though. But the installation should be pretty easy. And we specifically need Python and the Easy Install plugin for Python. We're going to use the Easy Install plugin uh, in, in order to install the Pigments project, which will do the actual syntax highlighting for us. So Easy Install is basically the same thing as a package manager for Ruby or a Node. So I'm going to run Easy Install Pigments. I'm going to run sudo Easy Install Pigments. And it's going to download and install everything for me. So that's really the only Python requirement that we have. Once we have that installed, though, we also need to install the NPM, or Node.js Package Manager package, for Pigments. And that provides a JavaScript wrapper in order to call out to the Pigments Python script. So I'm going to run sudo npm install. I'm going to go ahead and install this globally. Pigments. And then on top of pigments, we also need CoffeeScript, because Doco itself is actually written in CoffeeScript. 
So I'm going to run sudo npm install CoffeeScript. That brings CoffeeScript down. And lastly, I'm going to install the Docker project itself. sudo npm install docker. Now you may be wondering why docker isn't referencing all of these additional resources that it needs as dependencies. And yeah, I, I kind of wondered that myself. I'm not really sure why the docker package doesn't list CoffeeScript or pigments as dependencies directly, but it doesn't. So you have to manually install these. Once we have all the necessary tools installed, we can run the docko tool directly against our source code. And we do that by saying docko on the command line and then pointing it at the source code that we want to parse and, and produce documentation from. In this case, I'm gonna look at the lib or output of my siphon project and grab the backbone.siphon.js file. And by passing this into the docko tool, it's gonna to parse everything and produce the documentation for us. Now you can see on the output here that it produced a docs folder with backbone.siphon.html. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that in my browser, docs slash backbone.siphon.html. And here we have some very basic documentation along with our source code. So you can see the banner that we had generated with our grunt project before, and we can start seeing some nicely formatted comments inside of here as well. There's some header sections in here, and there's some comments that fit in with the actual content. Now these headers are showing up specifically because I've already included a few comments that are telling Docco what to do. Specifically, when you have a comment that's underlined with dashes like this, it turns that comment into a header. So if I remove these dashes and then reran the Docco process here and then go refresh the file, you'll see that the documentation no longer has that bold-faced header. If I go back and re-add it, rerun the documentation process, go refresh it, it now has the header again. And there's other things that we can do in here as well using simple markdown syntax. So for example, if I wanted to add a link, here is a link and we'll make that link somewhere. I can use the square brackets and have that link to any website that I want by enclosing the link in, curly, in, in parentheses at the end of it. And when I refresh the page, here's that link. So it's pretty simple. Go ahead and remove that, rerun it. And you can see we have some documentation already running in here with a few additional highlights, such as code blocks. And that's really all it takes to get Docco up and running and to create annotated source code. It's pretty simple. Now that we have the documentation generated, I want to host it on the GitHub Pages feature. Now, if you're not familiar with GitHub Pages, that's what allows you to have subdomain.github.com slash some page and actually have it show some page, some reference, some documentation that you want. A lot of people are doing blogs these days hosted on GitHub. A lot of projects are doing more advanced documentation. Uh, and there's all kinds of really cool uses for GitHub's Pages feature. And you can find documentation for GitHub pages at help.github.com slash pages. Now there's a couple of automated ways to create pages for us with some nice fancy UI and layouts and everything, but I'm not really interested in doing that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and skip down to creating a page manually because I'm having Docco generate the page for me. So I need to set up a new branch inside of my repository 
but have it be completely empty, completely clean, not linked to my existing code at all. And the commands that they have inside of here are going to do that for me. So I'm going to go ahead and move this off to the right, drop back into terminal here so I can run these commands. But before I run these commands to create my empty branch, I'm going to regenerate the documentation and then stash it so that I can drop it into the new branch that I create. So doco lib backbone siphon.js. I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to stash that because I'm going to need something to commit into the pages branch. Otherwise, the branch won't exist. So now to create this GH pages branch, which is what GitHub pages recognizes as a branch name, I need to run git symbolic ref head refs slash heads slash gh pages. I need to remove current index and then clean up the existing files. So when I look at my folder structure right now, it's a completely empty directory and it's a branch that does not have any relationship to the master branch anymore. It's no longer connected to that branch's history. So now I can do a git stash pop to get my documentation out of the stash that I had. Add that. And I have my new branch committed. I'm going to go ahead and push this up to my repository on GitHub. And then when I load up the Siphon project here, I should see that I have a GH, branch, GH pages branch, which I do. And that means I should be able to go to derekbailey.github.com slash backbone.siphon slash docs slash backbone.siphon.html. And there's my documentation hosted on GitHub. So I want to take this link and add that to the readme in my document, in my project documentation, so that I don't have to remember this link manually. So I need to check out the master branch, edit the readme. I'm going to add annotated source code. And now that I have that done, I'll commit that. Push that on up to GitHub. And when I refresh the siphon page on GitHub, we now have an annotated source code link that takes us right to the documentation. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Watch Me Code. For more information on Doco, Pigments, Markdown, or any of the other tools that I've used, see the following links and resources included with the episode. And be sure to visit watchmecode.net for a complete list of available episodes and to sign up for the mailing list so that you can be among the first to know when new episodes are released.